Well, you're most welcome to today's talk. It's Sunday, the 2nd of July. Now, I want to share with you today this latest report from the American uh, intelligence agencies. And I think we can now say definitively that we're not going to get a definitive answer on whether the SARS coronavirus 2 virus arose from a lab or not. We'll just have to be content with knowing that of the 58 million uh, square miles on the surface of the Earth, that's 149 million square kilometres, it just so happened that the virus arose within a few miles of the Wuhan Institute of Virology where they just so happened to be experimenting on these viruses. We might just have to leave it at that, but let's go to the detail. Now, to decide if you want to watch this video or not, uh, I'm going to give you my impressions to begin with. Um, I think there's uh, many potential incriminating details from the Wuhan Institute of Virology that indicate to me pretty strongly that the virus was a, a lab leak from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But then the report goes on and basically rebuts all of its own suggestions. So I get the dif distinct impression from this report that it's trying to um, almost debunk its own intelligence, indicating that this is a natural zoonotic spillover infection. So rather strange report, not an impressive document actually overall. Um, but it's also genuinely true that the intelligence community genuinely doesn't know a lot of the details. So that's kind of what this video is going to be about if you want to Stick around for the details, that would be great. Let's get straight down to it. So the background here is this at late March, uh, the, the US Congress was unanimously passed a law, absolutely all of them, um, hawks, doves, lefts, rights, Republicans, Democrats, up, down, sideways, whatever you want to call them. They all wanted everything the US intelligence had on this pandemic to be made public. And that's the public law there. Check it out on the US uh, website. Um, and it's a presidential backed order. So this is straight from uh, the chief's office himself. Uh, now, unfortunately, they didn't quite do what they were asked to do, as we'll, as we'll see, because um, um, they were told to declassify and make public all information related to COVID-19, all 18 agencies. Always bemused me the way the American intelligence services work or uh, somewhat like the British intelligence services on occasion don't work, for example, getting a bit mixed up about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and things like that and causing the odd war. But um, there's 18 of them, um, and they reported five days late. Now, um, a classified annex to this report, this is directly from the report, includes information that was necessarily to exclude from the unclassified section of the report, portion of the report. In other words... We've only got a bit of it. So as a result of this presidential order, uh, we're not told everything. Congress unanimously reported that everything be made public. It hasn't. Um, it, we might call this a bit of a damp squid in the UK. Um, very disappointing, really. But we've got what we've got. All agencies continue to assess both natural and laboratory associated origins. These are both remain plausible hypotheses to explain the first human infection according to you said this is the combined the combined so combined US intelligence has said well maybe this leak from a leak from a lab uh, maybe it didn't maybe this was natural infection maybe it wasn't and uh, it's hard to see we're going to get anything more from American intelligence actually but let's carry on because some pretty interesting stuff does come out coronavirus research in 2013 the Wuhan Institute of Virology so Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is where this probably started, collected animal samples from which they identified bat coronaviruses. So they've been doing this research since 2013 there. Not a new thing. Now, there's a lot of variation in the intelligence community on this. For example, the National Intelligence Council says this, the initial human infection with SARS coronavirus 2 most likely was caused by natural exposure to an infected animal. Uh, that carry the SARS coronavirus to or a close progenitor. So, um, national uh, national uh, the National uh, Intelligence Council. Um, which animal was it? Has it been found? Despite extensive looking, the report doesn't give us these details. Very disappointing. So, pretty questionable actually. Um, but but there you go. That's what they've said. A virus that probably would be more than 99% similar to SARS coronavirus 2, but strangely enough, despite 
what, three years of looking now, it has not been found. So I must say the National Intelligence Council of the United States um, doesn't seem to give much rationale for its uh, intelligence. But let's persevere. Uh, the Department of Energy and Federal Bureau of Investigation, the famous FBI, um, they say a laboratory-associated incident was the most likely cause of the first human uh, form, which does seem to be the case. Uh, most agencies assess that SARS coronavirus 2 was not laboratory adapted, uh, but are unable to make that determination. More on that in a minute. There is some new information has come to light on that. Um, but was this de deliberately manipulated in a laboratory? Probably not. Was there repeat reinfection experiments with viral selection? Probably. That's how the gain of function was facilitated. Uh, but more, as I say, more on that in a minute. Some interesting stuff has come out. All of the intelligence community uh, agencies assess that SARS coronavirus 2 was not developed as a biological weapon. Uh, I agree. This is an inadvertent release. This has called, this caused the Chinese to lose face. That's why we're not getting the full details. Um, they are deeply embarrassed about this. Face has been lost, and I'm convinced it wasn't a deliberate biological weapon. If it was, I'm quite sure that the Chinese, as the British, as the Americans, as basically any advanced country around the world, are quite capable of making a biological weapon with a, a lethality of... 90% or more. This is not anywhere near that weapons grade category. This is a mistake. I am totally convinced of a mistake based on a catalogue of mistakes and a lot of human arrogance. But nevertheless, it wasn't developed as a biological weapon. Viruses that are developed to do that could be way, way, way more deadly and way, way, way more transmissible. This is why it's so important to find out the cause of this pandemic because viral biological warfare and uh, other virus releases from abuse of wild animals or from uh, monoculture in abusive Western agriculture has got the potential to generate a virus which could be an ex existential threat, a th threat to the very existence of humanity. Not being melodramatic, viral infections can do that. That's why we have to get to the bottom of this one, or it would be good to get to the bottom of this one, even if we won't. But even if we don't get to the bottom of it, there's massive lessons that can be learned. We need to stop this gain-of-function research. And other things that we'll see from this report also need to be stopped because they are a real risk to us all. Wuhan Institute of Virology activities performed with or on behalf of the People's Liberation Army. So what is the link between the People's Liberation Army and the Wuhan Institute of Virology? And just to give you the bottom line here, um, there was a link between the Wuhan Institute of Virology and the People's Liberation Army, the Chinese military. But there is in the UK. There's links between scientists at Port and Down and British military. There's links between virological research in the United States and the US military. This is not unique to China by any means. The military do take an interest in this, understandably, because of the vast military implications of potential virological uh, warfare. So Wuhan Institute of Virology worked with scientists associated with the People's Liberation Army on a public health related project and collaborated on biosafety and biosecurity projects that is known by the US intelligence agencies. Information was available to the intelligence community indicates that some of the research conducted by the People's Liberation Army and Wuhan Institute of Virology included work with several viruses including coronavirus. So we know that the People's Liberation Army and the Wuhan Institute of Virology were working on this. This is known. These are direct from the report. Um, but no known virus that caused could be a possible progenitor of SARS coronavirus 2. Of course not. The evidence is, well, the evidence possibly was never there. Or if it was there, someone's made pretty good sure to make pretty certain that it's not there anymore. Um, so obviously the progenitor has not been found because it's been uh, it's been hushed up. Now, had there been a close zoonotic progenitor, that would have been found because people are looking for that. This is why this is why the lab leak theory is currently, in my view, more convincing because people are looking for the other explanations, but they haven't found it. Evidence for a natural zoonotic spillover infection has not been given where it could be given. 
whereas evidence for the lab leak can't be given because the records have been destroyed and the databases have been shut down. More evidence on that in a minute. Um, for example, the People's Liberation Army research researchers you have used Wuhan Institute of Virology Laboratory for viruses and vaccine-related work. Again, known, not, not debatable. Between 2017 and 2019, Wuhan Institute of Virology uh, funded and conducted research to enhance China's knowledge of pathogens and early disease warning capable uh, capabilities, capabilities for defence and biosecurity needs of uh, the military. Again, not necessarily anything wrong with that. As we say, that will be done in the... Well, we know it's done in the UK and in the United States as well. But the point is this has been going on before the pandemic. This is all... This time frame all kind of neatly fits into the start of the pandemic. Uh, Wuhan Institute of Virology collaborated with the People's Liberation Army on other vaccines and therapeutics relevant to coronaviruses. This is, uh, as we said, of the uh, the 58 million, uh, 58 million square miles on the surface of the planet. The Wuhan Institute of Virology was where the coronavirus research was primarily being uh, conducted. Now, coronavirus research and related activities performed at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. This is we, the American intelligence agencies, assess the WIV scientists. Uh, conduct, they assessed that they conducted extensive research on coronavirus, which included animal sampling and genetics. N not in debate. Um, but then they go on to say no direct evidence of a specific research-related incidents occurred. Well, no, it's been. If it did occur, the evidence has long gone. And we remember those completely farcical WHO visits, uh, which were probably less than pointless, really. Um, um, involving Wuhan Institute of Virology personnel before the pandemic that could have caused the COVID pandemic. So so this is this is what this report does all the way through. It says, well, we've got this kind of bit of a smoking gun here. Uh, but by the way, this is probably why it's not true. So that's why it's a very... Re very uh, frustrating report to read it kind of gives information then it, it, it almost contradicts doesn't contradict itself but it gives it gives counter argument but in a way which really isn't that productive i mean it's only a few pages do read it for yourself it's all there um it's all completely uh intelligible english there's no sort of uh, gibberish in it um it just doesn't tell you uh, as much as you would uh as much as you would like to know, but you can you can read through the whole thing in about forty minutes, forty well certainly within an hour. Um, Wuhan Institute of Virology, Coronavirus Research and Holdings. Wuhan Institute of Virology probably maintained one of the world's largest repositories of bat samples. The place was full of coronaviruses, which enabled its coronavirus research. First possessed SARS coronavirus two in late December uh, nineteen. So SARS coronavirus two specifically. It was possessed in late December 2019 uh, when Wuhan Institute of Virology researchers isolated and identified from patients diagnosed with pneumonia. So the first time they're actually admitting to having SARS coronavirus 2 was when they're saying they picked it up from the environment. But as we say, the animal reservoir has never been identified. Um, since uh, since uh, 2019, some researchers uh, analysed uh, uh, pangolin samples. Now, these poor pangolins, much abused in, in Asia. Uh, people in China and uh, Vietnam and places have some ludicrous belief in pangolin blood, and these animals are b badly abused, probably become extinct, actually. But the, the, the viral theory from pangolins has never been substantiated. Why on earth is the intelligence communities in the United States still going on about pangolins? when we know that these uh, animals weren't the, uh, or well, there's no evidence that they were an intermediate species, and yet they still be seen to be hanging to this uh, fig leaf. Um, disappointingly mentioned that. By the end of 2019, Wuhan Institute of Virology maintained distinct teams focusing on Middle East respiratory syndrome, coronavirus, and uh, SARS coronavirus-related viruses. Middle East respiratory syndrome still occurs from sometimes uh, primarily in the Middle East, very dangerous disease, high mortality rate, and we get the occasional cases, mostly in Saudi Arabia and places like that, from camels. 
it's a, an ongoing zoonotic spread from camels, but that's what they were researching. MERS is concerning because of the high uh, fatality rate, much more lethal than SARS coronavirus 1 or 2. Both teams separately use uh, transgenic uh, mouse models to better understand how the virus infected humans. Now, transgenic mouse models is basically, in this context, it's a mouse that's had human genes introduced into it. So these mice would express human-type receptors in their respiratory epithelium, for example, that have the uh, that have these ACE receptors, which are, are of the human type. So these are transgenic mice, human genes into mice. So they can do research on them. And of course, that means you can have successive uh, waves of infection. You can take one virus, take the most infectious virus, reinfect the human mouse, stroke human cells, and evolve the virus from that, which is what I believe happened. Um, so they were using these transgenic mice uh, to better understand how viruses infect humans. So basically, instead of doing the viruses testing on humans, they did it on mice with human uh, human respiratory epithelium and ACE receptors. Wuhan Institute of uh, Genetic... So the Wuhan Institute of Virology has genetic engineering capability. Whether that was done or not, they don't say. We assess that some scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology have genetically engineered coronaviruses using common laboratory practices. So yes, this has been done. So that's what the US intelligence agencies think. Scientists at Wuhan Institute of Virology have created chimeras. Now, a chimera in the context of a virus is they've created a new virus with uh, RNA, in this case, from two different viruses. This is what can happen if um, someone, for example, is infected with two forms of influenza. Those two forms of influenza can combine in a single cell. They can produce a, can produce a chimera, a completely new form of um, influenza uh, virus, almost like a sexual reproduction amongst viruses because of the combination, recombination of the genetic material, in this case the RNA, the ribonucleic acid. And this can cause what we call, uh, we, this can call, ge cause genetic shift. There can be a radical change in the virus. It can greatly increase its transmissibility. That's why we got the 1918-1919 influenza pandemic and various other pandemics since then. This is a dangerous thing to do. Um, in, in common parlance, it's a Frankenstein virus. It's got bits of one virus, bits of another virus. They've put it together. And I don't believe they can predict the properties that come from that. And yet that research was being done. Again, not unique to Wuhan at all. This is being done in other places around the world. And in my view, needs to stop. It's just too dangerous. Um, but it is being done and probably being done as, as we speak. Unfortunately, uh, some of the Wuhan Institutes of Virology did genetic engineering projects on coronaviruses involved techniques that could make it difficult to detect uh, intentional changes. Now, this is particularly concerning, actually. What this is saying is that the Wuhan Institute of Virology were using certain techniques to manipulate, uh, genetically manipulate the virus, viruses, but in a way that couldn't be detected. So there's ways to genetically manipulate viruses that make it indistinguishable from a virus that arose by natural evolutionary processes in the natural setting. So they found a way to blow the smoke away from the smoking gun. Um, it's now not possible always to detect. Uh, they have, there's now techniques so they can fiddle with these viruses to the heart's content and then get away with it. The people that die don't get away with it, of course, but um, you can't actually detect that was done so that's pretty alarming from the american intelligence agencies Wuhan institute of virology found that reverse uh, reverse genetic cloning techniques so left no traces of genetic modification yeah so they could cover their tracks so no one can ever tell that is a bit that is um yeah that's that's quite concerning um again we can assume this is this is being done in other labs around the world and again it really should stop because experimentation should only be done at the price of complete accountability, which, of course, is not there. Unfortunately, 
we know there's biosafety concerns at Wuhan Institute of Virology. Um, some uh, researchers probably did not use adequate biosafety precautions prior to the pandemic in handling SARS coronavirus 2 like viruses. Again, that's the assessment of the American uh, intelligence community. Increasing the risk of accidental exposure to viruses. And we know that before the pandemic, they had been working hard to try and improve their biosecurity because they knew it was inadequate. Uh, they were aware of this. Um, China's decision of which uh, pathogens require higher biocontainment protocols remain opaque. So quite how they decided how secure it should be um, is unknown. But we do know that the Chinese were unhappy with the levels of security prior to the commencement of the pandemic. They were short of trained personnel. Uh, Mid-2019, Wuhan Institute of Virology officials were evaluating and implementing biosafety training. They're trying to improve it training and procurements, but it was still pretty old-fashioned when people expected the labs in 2020. As of January 19, Wuhan Institute of Virology researchers performed SARS-like coronavirus experiments in BLS. So that, that's, that's a fairly basic, should be BLS-4. So it, it, they were doing the SARS coronavirus experimentation in areas of very low viral uh, security. Um, again, this needs to stop. It's really quite unacceptable to take these risks with the whole population of the planet. Um, despite knowledge going back to 2017, that these viruses could infect humans. So in 2017, we knew these viruses could infect humans, but they were still taking risks with them in January 2019. Uh, as, as of 2020, they identified the need to update aging equipment, need for additional disinfectants of equipment and improved ventilation systems were being carried out. Uh, a classic case of bolting the stable door after the horse had uh, bolted. So these things are now definitive because they're from this, um, they are from this, uh, this report. Now, things that weren't mentioned, not mentioned by the report, only one focus of the outbreak. So with a natural zoonotic outbreak, we would expect it to break out from the animal reservoir here, then somewhere different, then somewhere different, over different geographical places and different times. This didn't happen. This only had an outbreak once or at most twice in Wuhan at the same time. Not what we would expect. In previous pandemics, SARS coronavirus 1, for example, that, that was zoonotic and that cropped up various places and various times, as of uh, numerous forms of influenza. So the fact that this only cropped up in one place at one time is highly suggestive of a lab leak. No animal intermediates have been uh, identified. The WHO visits were laughable and didn't show anything at all. Um, Wuhan Institute of Virology uh, began... Probably may have. This is the this is the combined intelligence report, developing two coronaviruses in November two thousand nineteen, but of course the Chinese government tell us that the virus was only discovered on the eighth uh, of December. Uh, sorry, two thousand. That should be two thousand and nineteen. So, um, Chinese government say the virus was first identified eighth of December nineteen, but they were doing research on vaccines a month before that. Um, or may have been, according to the American intelligence communities. Again, all very, very uh, suspicious kind of stuff. U.S. Consulate General in Wuhan noticed an increase in influenza-like illnesses, influenza-like illnesses, flu-type illnesses, like SARS coronavirus too. They noticed that October, October to November 2019, but it was negative flu influenza. Now, if these viruses are positive for influenza, if someone has got influenza, it's a very simple test. Any hospital can do it. Um, it it's just a simple viral test, simple PCR test. Uh, my A&E &A &E department used to do it locally. We had the results back. I used to take the swabs, run it through the machine, and the results would be back within, uh, I think it was about, about 35 minutes to get the result, 45 minutes, no more than that. Uh, but these results all came back negative. So this wasn't influenza, so what the heck was it? Um, again, very uh, suspicious because it was negative for influenza. And this is coming from the US consulate in Wuhan. 
Uh, the amount of influenza-like illness around was statistically significantly higher than in the previous five years. So there was definitely something going on. Direct quote by mid-October. This is from another US intelligence previous report. Um, um, by mid-October 2019, the dedicated team at the US consulate general in Wuhan knew that the city had been struck by what was thought to be an unusual vicious flu season, but was testing negative flu influenza. But of course, no admission from the the, the, the American intelligence agencies here very, seem very reluctant to say two plus two equals four. I don't know quite why they would be so uh, reluctant to uh, uh, acknowledge that. And things got worse in November, as we know. But of course, the virus wasn't admitted till the 12th of December. Even the China Centre for Disease Control, none of the samples taken from the 18 animal species found in the market were positive for sars coronavirus too. Um, EcoHealth Alliance and National Institutes of Health Funding, uh, not mentioned. EcoHealth Alliance with the Wuhan Institute of Virology Project, Diffuse, diffusing the threat of bat-borne coronaviruses, was ongoing. We know that the money was coming from the US to China, but again, not mentioned in the report. You know, all of these things surely must be adding up to something. But the US intelligence report seems incapable of synergizing this into what basically I would have thought should be a fairly, uh, a fairly obvious answer. So despite the information being given in this report, they just don't seem to want to admit um, the obvious implications that appear to be uh, flowing from this data, but they don't, they don't, they don't come to a, that conclusion. They, they say it's still open. Basically, this is an exercise on sitting bang in the middle of the fence. So again, this is just simply not mentioned. Mid October to mid mid November 2019, Wuhan Institute of Virology collected twenty thousand pattern animal samples, but did not disclose all of the viruses. Before 2019, the Wuhan Institute of Virology published sequences in a public health database. And the public health database was taken down in September 19. So make no mistake about it, we have evidence that the public health database of all the viruses from the Wuhan Institute of Virology that was published was mystically taken offline in 2019. They just took it offline. Why, why would they do that? Why would they do that? Um... Senator Roger Marshall um, is, a, is actually a physician, this guy, as a doctor as well. Um, as we've seen nearly every step of the way while trying to uncover the origins of the SARS coronavirus too, the Biden administration has failed to be transparent with the American people and members of Congress. OK, so we make no political point about President Biden, of course, but that's that's the view of this uh, of this senator there's been a failure today's release you know, the senator carries on today's release of the declassified documents is late and does not provide the full picture of what our intelligence agencies know professor richard erbright uh new jersey five days late and a dollar short not even remotely responsive or compliant with the law and i must say i, I have to agree with this given that this is a a unanimous Congress report, uh, vote and a presidential decree, to me, doesn't look like it's been complied with, but maybe presidential decrees and uh, votes of Congress aren't binding in the United States. I know they're supposed to be, but practically maybe they're not. Um, it is dismaying that a sitting president of the United States breaks the law in the, in the views of uh, um, the uh, Professor Urbright. Um, violates the oath of office and shows contempt for the public on matters of national importance. Pretty strong, pretty strong words, it has to be said. Pretty strong words. Um, but we're not getting the conclusion we want. Mike Pompeo, who was the Secretary of State at the time uh, when they first uh, looked into this, the declassification of COVID origins report confirms what we knew from the beginning. The only logical explanation is that the virus came from the Wuhan lab. So he clearly sees this as the evidence uh, that indicates that there was, in fact, 
a lab leak. So there you go, two possibilities, natural zoonotic spillover infection or a lab leak. And uh, I, think, I think it's clear from the evidence we've looked at uh, which conclusion you may choose to come to from the evidence that we've looked at. But don't let me uh, stop you from looking at it for yourself. It's all there. Uh, no matter how unimpressive <laughs> that is uh, what we've got again pretty straightforward easy reading um, check it out make your own mind up as always and um, just before I say thank you for watching just I want to just really want to reinforce how important this is viruses and viral manipulation are an existential threat to humanity and certainly to civilization and uh, it really is time to stop messing around with these things. What, what don't these clever intelligence type people get? And at that, we'll leave it. Thank you for watching.